So uh, the topic is functions, as you can see. And when we talk about function, we are talking of a mathematical expression of uh, a relationship that exists between variables. And as you said, when you are in question, life is about relationships. You are in relationships every day. You are forming new relationships. You are quitting some relationships. You are maintaining relationships. So the mathematical expression of the relationships is what we are calling a function. And in this one, we have what we call dependent variables and dependent variable. Dependent variable is the one that is brought or is made to change by the independent variable. And uh, independent variable is normally presented by x, while dependent is usually represented by y. But you can as well use other letters. But practice has it. The independent we use x, and the dependent we use y. Now, in a function, y can only be 1, but x can be either 1 or more than 1. Can be either 1 or more than 1. The other thing is uh, this equation is normally written as y is equal to f of x, and that means y is a function of x. What we see in y is brought about by x. And uh, it is then expounded to be written as a, b, x, where a is called constant, that is the value of y that does not depend on uh, x. It is also called intercept because it is the value at which the function will touch y axis when it is plotted. B is called the gradient or the slope, and it shows the rate at which y will change when x changes by one unit. Now, the other thing is about applications of uh, functions. Functions are widely applicable in business. You can apply them in uh, costs management. You can apply them in revenues. You can apply them in profits. You can apply them in computation of wages, computation of depreciation, uh, appreciation, uh, computation of probabilities like we are doing with normal probability distribution, you can apply them in uh, determining the maximum and the minimum values. So there is a whole spectrum or a whole range of uh, applications where we use functions. But for our case, we focus more on revenues, costs, and profits, because that's the main concern of any business. And also we shall be looking at how do you maximize, how do you minimize. Uh, the other thing that you need to know is about the types of functions. And uh, functions is a whole field of study. If you go to university, you can be able to study functions as a, as a subject for a whole four years. So that means there is a lot that you can do about functions. But for our case, we only confine ourselves to what is more important to us as accountants. And uh, the first one is what we call academic functions. Now, there's a function that has a log as one of its elements. And uh, for our case, we will not get to the details of the so-called mantisas, the characteristics, how you convert the indices to logs and vice versa, because we already have a scientific calculator. So in case you come across any log, you only press the button and you get the log. The other one is called univariate function. That's a function that has only one independent variable. And then the other one is called multivariate. Multivariate is a function that has more than one independent variables. It has more than one independent variables. The other type that you come across is called exponential. Now, exponential is a function whereby <coughs> sorry, the independent variable is part of the uh, exponent or is part of the power. And we came across this when you are looking at the exponential probability distribution. And I remember telling you it is more applicable in a topic called QM theory, which is no longer part of your syllabus. So we will not deal with it so much. The other one that you need to know are called polynomial functions. Now, polynomial are functions which have powers of the independent variables. And uh, the power of a polynomial is known as order. You can also call it degree. And the order or the degree are used to name a polynomial. So we have the first order. Uh, the first order is where we have, uh, we have the highest power being equal to one. 
we have the second order power being equal to two, uh, three power uh, order being three, that is cubic, and so on and so on. Now, of those functions that are listed there, or the ones that I've mentioned, the ones that are very, very important to us are two. Under the polynomial, that is the linear functions and the quadratic functions. Those are the ones that you will keep on coming across in your syllabus. Uh, so from there now, I want us to look at linear functions. So that is what we shall write. Obviously, I don't know whether you have written functions and calculus or functions. Yeah, you can write functions and calculus as a topic. Functions and calculus, that is the topic. Then we do that as a linear function. Linear function. Linear function. Linear function. Now, when we talk of a linear function, there are some characters that should be exhibited for any function to be called linear. And as you can see in the notes, there's a function whose highest power is one. And when you plot it on the graph, it produces a straight line. We are going to see that in a while. And then the function is well defined. If you are given coordinates of any two points and, uh, or you are given coordinates of any one point and the gradient. So we can have example one. Okay, example one. After that, example one. Develop and plot a function. Develop and plot a function. Develop and plot a function. Passing through point A. Passing through point A, two, four, and B, four, ten. Okay, so we are given those two points. Let's have the solution. Let's have the solution. So when you're dealing with a, a linear function or any type of function, we always start by writing the format. So the format is y is equals to a plus bx. That is what you have said because the highest power is one. Then you substitute. Now substituting this is four here is equal to a plus two uh, b. This is because of point a. And then this other one will be 10 is equals to A plus 4B. This is because of point B. Because of point B. From there now you say minus. So this is minus 6 is equals to minus 2B. And it follows that B is three. It follows that B is three. And if B is three, when I be happy, you say four is equals to A plus two times three. So from there, tell me A is what? Negative two. So thus, our function is y is equals to minus two plus three x. So that is the function. That simple. So Sasa, when you want to plot, eh, as you said when you are doing linear programming, uh, linear programming. 
Okay, you look at the highest value and the lowest value. So the values of y, they are this one, this four, this 10, and this a. So you can see the highest is 10 and the lowest is minus two. So those ones gives you an idea. Uh, the values of x, they are these two, these and this. So the highest is four, the lowest is uh, two. So we design a graph here. We design a graph here, whereby we'll have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, if I have my y axis here, this is 10, this is 9, this is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, this is where I will have my this 8. Where I will have my x axis. I have uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is x axis. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is zero. So this is minus one, this is minus two. So, uh, you brought, remember to Mesema, you only require two points when you're dealing with a linear function. So, when x is 2, y is 4. So, that is 60 here. So, this is where I have my point A. And when y is 4, or x is 4, y is 10. So, 4, 10. This is point B. Then those two points, you connect them using a very straight triangle. A very straight triangle. And that line should be extended to that y axis. And you tell us this is y is equals to minus 2 plus dx. Minus 2 plus dx. Sasa, uh, you can see the value of A is minus two, and that is where the function touches Y axis. That's where the function touches Y axis. Okay, so write example two. Example two. Develop and plot the equation. Develop and plot the equation of a line of a line passing through points, passing through points A is minus two and ten. B, we have 
have uh, four. Two. Minus two. So that one would that depend on I and I in the same same style that we have done with that one. Same same style. So I take example three. Example three. Example three of the same develop the equation of a function. Develop the equation of a function passing through point A 20, 30, through point A 20, 30, and has a gradient of four. And has a gradient of so the solution to that is that y is equal to a plus bx. Y is equal to a plus bx. <coughs> so sasa hi, pasema y is 30, z equals to a, which is unknown. B we know is four, and uh, X we know is 20. So from there, tell me A should be what? From there, you tell me A should be what? Negative. Yeah. Hmm? Negative 10. Yeah. Negative 50. So y is equal to minus 50 plus 4x. So that is when now you have been given coordinates of any one point and the gradient. Coordinates of just one point and the gradient. So I think example four. Develop the function. Develop the function of a line passing through point A, of a line passing through point A, minus 24, positive 60, minus 24, positive 60, with a gradient of minus six, with a gradient of minus six. With a gradient of minus six. So, after here, the and I, the same style. So, those are the two scenarios where you can be given uh, values to develop a linear function. Either of the pair of coordinates of any two points, or coordinates of one point together with the gradient. And remember, I've said linear functions are one of the very most common in your case. So let's go to the next one, which are called quadratic functions. Quadratic functions, the second most popular in your case, quadratic. Quadratic functions. Now, a function is said to be quadratic if it satisfies some characters, which are already uh, recorded in your notes. One of the characters is that the highest power should be two. The second character is that when you brought this function, it should give you just one turning point. And the other character is that the function is well-defined if you are given coordinates of any three points. Coordinates of any three points. And uh, the last one is that uh, a quadratic function has two solutions, Nakuaka has two solutions, or we call them roots at times. And those roots can be obtained using a formula, we call it the quadratic formula, or you can use a graph. 
you can use a graph, we shall go through that. Uh, so to illustrate that, I think I example one. Example one, Oseme, develop a quadratic function, develop a quadratic function, for the following points, for the following points, three, 50, B, corner five, 90, and C, corner eight, 120. You are given those kind of uh, points. So I think a solution. Solution. Now in the solution, as I've told you, we always begin with the format. So the format is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Because to me, server, the highest power is two. The highest power is two. Uh, so we start substituting. So in point A, uh, y is 50. Y is 50. Uh, so three squared is what? Nine. So nine A plus 3b plus c. And this one, you call it equation number one. You call it equation number one. Let's go to the next, which is, uh,
Good. Have we proceeded? Uh -huh. So how about I can 90? Is equal to 5 squared is what? 25A plus 5B plus C. This is Roman 2. Then there is 120 being equal to 64A plus 8B plus C. This is Roman 3. Uh, so from there, you say removing C from equations one and two from equations one and two. Uh, we have uh, 50 is equals to 9a plus 3b plus c. Then 90 is equals to 25a plus 5b plus c. So when you seek to subtract, 50 minus uh, 90 is what? Negative 40 is equals to 9 minus 25 is minus what? 16A and this is minus 2B. So this one, you call it equation number 4. You call it equation number 4. Then you proceed and say, removing C from equations two and three. Removing C from equations two and three, we will have 90 being equal to 25A plus 5B plus C. We have 120 being equal to 64A plus 8B plus C. So, Sasa, when you say minus, when you say minus, uh, 90 minus 120 is what? Minus 30 is equals to 25 minus 64 is uh, minus 39A minus 3B. This is equation number five. That is equation number five. Ah, yeah. Then, <clears throat> from there we say, removing B from equations. From equations four and five. From equations four and five, we have minus 40 is equals to minus 16A minus 2B. Minus 30 equals minus 39A minus 3B. Minus 3B. So now that the coefficients are not the same, I think we have to say times three here and times two so that they be equal. Then we say we get, we get, We get, this is minus 120 being equal to minus what, 48, eh? 48A minus 6B. This is minus 60 being equal to, or oh, even that's nine, eh? So minus 78, eh? 
minus 78A minus 6B minus 6B. So we have minus there. Uh, so minus 120 minus minus 60 to natural minus minus 60 and minus 48 minus minus 78 we have what we have a uh, positive that See positive that a that means a is minus what minus two then we say using equation five Using equation five, using equation five, we have minus 30 being equal to minus 39A, or we already know now the value of A. So, times minus two, then you say minus three B. So this must be, B is equal to 39 times two plus 30. All these you divide by what, three, yeah? That's okay. This becomes positive. And you can go to the other side in a positive force. Mm -hmm. What's the answer? That is it. So then using equation one, using equation uh, one, using equation one, we will have uh, 50 being equal to nine times minus two plus three times 36 plus C, so tell me C is what? Negative forty. So C is negative forty. Thus, y is equal to minus two x square plus thirty six x minus forty. Uh, then you say solving using quadratic formula. Solving using quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. That is if you have been told to solve. Eh? You have been told to solve using quadratic formula. So you begin by writing the quadratic formula.
So we're using quadratic formula. We are going to say X is minus B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC. You get the square root. You divide by 2A. So uh, this becomes minus B is minus 36. So plus or minus 36 squared minus 4 times A is minus 2 times C, which is minus 40. This one, you get the square root. Then you divide this by 2 times A. A is minus 2. So we proceed and say this is equal to minus that six plus or minus, give me what is that the square root. Huh? 21. That 1.24. So this becomes minus that six plus that 1.24, you divide by minus four or minus that six, minus that 1.24, you divide by minus four. Aya, sasa, aha, hii umepata. Aha, the other one. 16.81. Yeah, so that is how you can solve. If you are told to solve, you will solve that way using the formula. Uh, I've seen very many students make a mistake when it comes to distribution. They think that these two is dividing these apart. Here and the square root, but you can see it is dividing the one. Yeah. The other mistake I've seen students commit is thinking that uh, every time whatever starts here is your A, whatever is at the middle is B, and whatever is last here is C. But that is not the concept. The concept is uh, the coefficient of X. So whoever is the coefficient of x squared, irrespective of the record, that is your a. 
Whoever is the coefficient of x, that is a b. Whoever does not have x, that is a c. Now from there, you can say using or solving, uh, solving using graphical methods, using a graph, solving using a graph, uh, we are supposed to plot, but because we don't have a lot of, we don't have the full data, or this can take a bit of time, and it's not to scale. Uh, so I'll just ask it how it looks like. Once you brought eh, it, if you look like this, just draw like a small thing like this. That's like a small graph. This is x axis, and this is y axis. Then that function will be coming from down here this way, and then it will turn that way. Now here, the first point to touch is x, this is 1.19, and the second point to touch is 16.81, this is zero. Yeah, so if you were to plot uh, where it touches the x-axis, those are the answers. Where it touches x-axis, those are the answers. That's the maximum, but as you go by and by, I'll be showing you how to get the maximum point, the turning point. So that is uh, about quadratic functions. So example two that we shall do later on. Is develop a function for the following values. Develop a function for the following values. Function for the following values. So, yeah, okay. You have not copied it, I want to wrap. Yeah, I got it. See, myself, I develop a function for the following values. Yeah, we don't want to stop. It's only the values. No, no, I don't want to pick up the Yes, yeah, and why? That's a trick used by examiner, especially to put a correlation. Because many people think that X is the way in answer. So, when I get opposite, so the future of the then you have to use the wrong figures. So, Sasa, if we have copied that, eh, uh, the next thing that we need to discuss is called differentiation. 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 Now, differentiation is uh, a technique, or first of all, it is a branch in calculus. And it is uh, also a technique that we use to compute the rate of change for nonlinear functions. It is the one we use to get a gradient for functions that are not straight lines. 
And uh, we differentiate a function with respect to the independent variable or independent variables. When you differentiate a function, it is called derivative or differential. There are very many rules that guide differentiation, but for our case, I'll just confine us to just three, although I think I've given you six or seven rules in the notes, but uh, for your CPA syllabus, the first three are the most applicable. The constant rule, the general rule, and the subtraction and the addition rule. So that, those are the ones that we shall confine ourselves to, but uh, in your own time, you can have a look at the others. So straight on, I want to illustrate those rules using examples. I want us to go through that using examples. So I think I example one. Example one. So in example one, if you are given y is equal to seven, is equal to seven, as of all, this seven, it is the same thing as seven x raised to power zero. A number raised to power zero is one, and therefore a number multiplied by one is that number. Now, if you are told to differentiate y with respect to x, that is how it's said, differentiate y with respect to x. According to the general rule, there are two steps that you take. The first step is to multiply the original function using the original power. So the power is zero, this one. You multiply the function, the original function that way as a first step. The second step is you reduce the original power by one. So you minus one here. And when you do that, the answer becomes what? Zero, because any number multiplied by zero is zero. And that is now what we call the constant true. That the differential of a constant will always be zero. All right. Example number two. Example number two. Example number two. If you are told y is equal to one out of x raised to power four, if you are told y is equal to one out of x raised to power four, first of all, this one can be expressed as x raised to power minus what? Four. If you remember a bit of rules of indices minus four. So when they tell you to differentiate y with respect to x, you just take your first step, which you have said is the original power minus four x, you raise power minus four. Then that power, you reduce it by one. When you reduce by one here, uh, you'll be left with minus four x raised power minus five. is to power minus five. All right. Example number three. Example number three. If you are told y is equal to eight x cubed plus 10 x squared minus four x plus 16, you're given a function like that. Then what will happen is that dy dx, dy dx, it is three, I have eight x raised to power three, you less one as the second step. I have then put a power with me give me seven two, 10x raised to power two, you less one, that way. When the power you will give us one, four x raised to power one minus one, that way. Then we will give us seven plus zero, 16x raised to power zero minus one. 
minus one. And uh, when you do that, what you get is uh, 24x squared plus 20 raised power one minus four raised power zero plus zero. And this finally settles as uh, 24x squared plus 20x minus four. That is how it settles. The you We don't need another example because they are enough. And in any case, whatever else we are still going to do is uh, more of that. I have the next thing at the differential is something called partial differentials. Partial differentials. Partial differentials. Partial differentials. Now, partial differentials, they occur when you differentiate a function with respect to more than one independent variables. For example, if you are given y is equal to x raised to power three plus z squared uh, minus xz. If you are given a function like that, that should be example one. Uh, this function has two independent variables. Independent variables means the coincide. So we have x and we have z. So the first partial differential would be dy dx. You differentiate uh, y with respect to x. Now this one, it is going to be what? It is going to be 3 x 3 raised to power minus 1. So, plus zero z squared x raised to power zero. And then this one, because we are differentiating with respect to x, you less one. Then you say minus one x, which is raised to power one, you minus one. Z minus Z. So how does this change? It becomes three X squared plus zero. So that becomes zero because it does not have X minus a X raised to power zero Z. And this final settles are 3x squared minus z. Minus z. Example two. Example two, if you are given y is equals to 10x raised to power four minus 12z cubed plus five x squared z squared. We are given something like that, and we are told to differentiate. Then dy dx. Now, you are given to be differentiated with respect to z. Mm -hmm. You find that x two should have done for. We need to make you go at it. 
it was y is equals to x raised power three plus z squared minus x z. So look for somewhere you squeeze it. Eh? Look for somewhere you squeeze it. Eh? You have to say me dy dz. We have to make it clear because the target is very high. <laughs> okay, so now we are differentiating with respect to z. So as a happen, we come up with z raised to power zero. So it is zero uh, x cubed z raised to power zero minus one because now we are differentiating with respect to z. To the good that we will give it is two z squared raised to power minus one. That way, I am minus upper kuna z raised to power one. So it is one x z raised to power one minus one. So sasa, the first one becomes zero. We will give an about two z raised to power one minus uh, x z raised to power zero and this is left as two z minus x two z minus x so that is the second part so let's go back now to example two. So example two, we can now go straight. Sasa hapa, see this is x, so we multiply by four. You have to achieve a 40 x cubed. Now this one does not have x, so it becomes zero. Eh? I hapa to kona x raised to power two. So two times five, that is 10. So plus 10xz squared. 10xz squared. I have we are beginning dy dz. Dy dz. Now this one becomes zero because it does not have z. See there? Are you for it becomes zero because it does not have z. This one has z, so we differentiate kawaita the to part minus 36 z squared plus 10x squared z. What's up? So then it should be the two two conditions. Here yeah, x z z zero. Hapa. 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 Si but if it is. It depends on the the value of z at the beginning, such that when you differentiate it, does it remain or does it go to zero? Unaona kama kwa kwa hapa, unaona hapa imeenda. Because now here we are differentiating with respect to x. So, because x is 0 here, this now goes. Then we put hapa x is 2. So, you differentiate your to part 10x and after z remains square. The same case we put hapa. Hapa now when you differentiate with respect to z, hapa kuna z, so it becomes 0. Hapa, how I die. Then hapa, because of z, eh, this times this, we get 10. And after z, we make a 1. That's called Asha. Are you okay? Visions. Are you okay or you are seeing dust? 
I have three more things that I need to do. Now I'm at I have 18 minutes. Uh, the next one is called uh, higher order differentials. Higher order differentials. We normally refer to them as HODs. I order differential. And this one is very simple. It is what you get when you differentiate a function more than once. What you get when you differentiate a function more than once. So if you are given a function here, function y is equal to x cubed plus 4x squared plus 8x minus 14. If you're given a function like that, and you are told to get all the possible differentials. So you tell us first order differentials. First order differentials, therefore D, you differentiate Y with respect to X for the first time. Uh -huh. Give me the answers now. Differentiate this function. 3x squared, 3x squared plus 8x plus 8. Yeah, it's evil. Uh, so from there, if you want uh, second order differential, second order differential. So in adequa, differentiate second time y with respect to x second time. So you can see where we are writing the twos. Two in adequa upper quadina, upper qua x. So we are now differentiating this function again. Uh -huh. It will be what? 6x plus 8. Good. I have that order. Differential. Third order differential. So the third order differential will be a delta cube y out of dx cube. So this becomes what? Six. So that fourth order differential. Fourth order differential fourth order differential delta raised to power four y differentiate with respect to x the fourth time and that becomes what you see it's as simple as that and actually for your syllabus you will not need these ones you only require this because the HODs, we use them to identify the maximum and the minimum points, the turning points. And in the turning point, the gradient is zero. The gradient, the gradient is zero. So we'll only be requiring this because it is at this point that you know from economics, we say MR is equal to what? MC. So if you want to maximize anything, you will just equate the uh, the first order differential to zero, that will give you the point to maximize. The same case, if you want to minimize, you just, you just equate the first order differential to zero, that will give you the point at which you minimize. So we shall be doing a lot of this uh, in our application questions in the past papers. Good. The next thing is called integration. And that integration, we are going to look at it in two ways. We're going to look at it in two ways. The first way is called uh, indefinite integration. We just write indefinite integration. Definite integration. 
indefinite integration. Now this indefinite integration is, uh, or first of all, integration it is the opposite of differentiation, the opposite. And indefinite is where we do not have limits. We don't have limits. So I think I example one. Example one. So if you are told to integrate 4x cubed with respect to x, integrate, well, I think I think I think I think I that means integrate. So integrate 4x cubed. Now the solution to this, first of all, when you integrate a function, you go back to the original function. Because to Mesema, it is the reverse process. It's the reverse process. So you take this 4x cubed. If you remember the steps that we took to require kwanza to multiply, then we subtract. So going the reverse, we will add, then divide. So it is very simple. You now say add back one. Then divide by the new power, three plus one. And then we normally add C. C is called constant of integration. You see all these things you can notice. It's called constant of integration. And it is used to present any constant that became zero when we were differentiating. If you remember what we have done during differentiation, there are some values that were becoming zero. So this then becomes y is equals to x raised to the power four plus c. If you know the value of y and the value of x, you substitute them in the function and they will help you to know the value of c. But if you do not know like our case here, the However, when you are dealing with a revenue function, c is zero. And when you are dealing with a cost function, C is fixed cost. You shall be seeing that uh, in the next lesson. Ah, example two. Example two. If you are told to integrate 10x raised to the power four minus uh, 3x raised to the power minus four plus 6x plus 12 with respect to x, you are told to integrate something like that. You are told to integrate that. I, uh, the solution to that is that y is equal to 10x raised to the power 4 and back 1. You divide by the new power. 4 plus what? 1. I am minus 3x raised to the power minus 4 and back 1. You divide by the new power. Minus 4 plus 1. I am plus 6, which is 6x raised to the power 1 currently. You add back one, you divide by the new power, one plus one. I have plus 12, which is currently x raised to power zero. You add back one, you divide by zero plus one. You add the constant of integration, C. Now this one settles as 2x raised power 5 plus x raised power minus 3. See there? See there? See there? See there? See negative. Negative divided by negative is positive. Higher. Plus 3 x squared plus 12x plus c. 
That's called indefinite integration. The second type is called definite integration. Definite integration. Definite integration. So definite is where we have limits. Eh? Uh, I think I example one. We are told to integrate in the range of one to two, five x raised power four plus three with respect to x. So those limits are called, we have the lower limit and the upper limit. And uh, definite integration is used to look for area that is bounded by the function at the two limits. Now, this area can represent anything of interest. It could be profits, could be revenue, it could be the normal area in construction and so on. So the solution, now instead of saying why, why we normally say area, and the same this area can represent it. So you just integrate Kawaida 5x, 4 plus 1, you divide by 4 plus 1, plus 3x currently is to 0, you add back 1, you divide by 0 plus 1. Now here, we do not add the constant of integration, but if you wanted to add no harm, uh, but the practice is you don't add because it will simply it will immediately become zero. So what you are like a, a stroke like that. So as I hear in a song, what in the rate of in the rate of two and one. In the rate of two and one. So this proceeds to become uh, x raised to power five plus three x in the rate of two and one. Then what you do after that, you substitute the higher power or the higher value, the higher limit. So that's why it's two raised to power five plus three times two. You minus one raised to power five plus three times one. So give me that. Two raised to the power five is what? Give that two. That two plus uh, six, that is 13. Eh? Minus one raised to the power five is one. Plus three, that is four. So the area is 13, four. Very simple thing. You can example two. If you are told to integrate in the age of two to four, three x squared plus four x plus 10 with respect to x, With respect to X. So, solution. Uh, so, the same area is equal to 3X, 2 plus 1. You divide by 2 plus 1. Plus 4x currently is power 1, you add back 1. You divide by 1 plus 1. Plus 10x raised power 0, you add back 1. 
you divide by zero plus one in the ranges of uh, four to two or two to four. In the ranges of that. So this one gives you uh, x raised to power three plus two x squared plus 10 x in the ranges of two to four. In the ranges of two to four. Now you substitute. You say four cubed plus two times four squared plus 10 times four minus two cubed plus two times three squared plus oh, times two, <laughs> two squared. I have plus 10 times two. Uh-huh. The final, eh? So that is all that we need to say. Uh, the only thing that uh, cannot be said as that now is something called presence of constraints. Uh, that one is better than when we have a question. Uh, so what we have done, I've given you the overview of the whole topic because the questions we shall get in the first three parts, they cut across, you may see several parts. So with that overview, now when we come to the past papers, it will be very easy to navigate.